Hey violinists of YouTube, in today's video I'm going to be sharing some of my tips and tricks on how to travel with an instrument on any airline in the United States. Stick around to the end of the video so that way you get all of this information. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist, I do a lot of violin content, I do a lot of violin tutorials, and share a little bit about my uh, life as a violinist. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It also helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. First piece of advice I would give you is to do your research on the airline. So each airline has different airplanes and they have different overhead compartments and different sizes. So let's say if you're traveling with an instrument, um, let's say it's like a oboe or a clarinet case. It's more of a square-ish box uh, case, so that way it's, it's a little easier for you to kind of put that underneath the seat in front of you. However, for certain types of instruments like the violin, viola, you're gonna want to double check if your instrument, if the dimensions of the violin case fit the dimensions of the overhead compartment. Step number two is to check the airline. And the reason for that is that each airline has different boarding process. Let's say, for instance, you're traveling with your instrument and you are traveling on this kind of plane and this is the boarding process. Most of the time, if you're flying on a smaller jet, the overhead compartments get really filled up. So what I would do is to double check if you can board the plane a little earlier. Usually there's like a fee involved depending on the airline. So I would double check that. And again, double check the plane in which you are flying because sometimes if you're flying like with an instrument, the instrument case may not fit in the overhead compartment. So I would double check that. And step number three, it's a nice transition into what I'm about to say next. And that is to have uh, done your research on the airplane model. Not every airplane has, you know, a lot of seat in front of them. Usually airlines are now actually you know, with the like with the economy classes, you're having a lot less space in front of you, let alone, you know, they're trying to cram in more people and less overhead space. So that way, you know, people can check in their bag to wherever they're flying to, to get more revenue. So double check, you wanna make sure that you are not having any arguments with any of the flight attendants or any of the airline staff, because that's always a yucky situation, which I'm about to explain next. Step number four is to always be prepared. And here's what I mean by this. There will be times where if you're flying with an instrument, you know, you're going to have an encounter or two regarding your instrument. You know, they're going to be like, oh, you can't fit this over the overhead compartment. You, you can't put this underneath the seat in front of you. There are going to be a lot of obstacles that you're going to be facing. This is uh, for violin violas and, you know, smaller instruments such as clarinet, oboe. And I'm going to discuss in a moment about cellos bases and how to approach that situation. What I recommend you do is print out a, a document, which I'm gonna leave down in the description below. You click on it and then I want you to have this in your violin case and for whatever reason, if there's a person who is just, has absolutely no idea that you're holding an instrument and has no idea about the rules of having an instrument on board. This has happened to me before. I was flying to Boston from Chicago and I actually had to put like the document in front of this flight attendant's face. I'm like, no, I'm allowed to have my violin on board and you're gonna let me. So that, that, that was an uncomfortable situation, but I did end up going on the plane and the person was, you know, at fault, obviously. Be prepared. Nothing will go your way when you're flying with an instrument, I guarantee you. Something will happen, at least maybe once every blue moon, something will happen. And it's your job to be prepared, to be over-prepared. Now let's go ahead and talk about the, the bigger instruments like the cellos, the basses, and like trombones or any other larger instruments like euphoniums, tubas, whatever. The advice that I would give you, if you're holding on to or playing on a very expensive instrument, let's say, there are certain different cello flight cases that you can buy. And I know there's one from BAM, France. You know, there's a, it's a string case, instrument case company. Uh, they have a, a flight case that you can have if you want to check in your cello. However, I don't recommend that. There have been horror stories, you know, from like United to, you know, Lufthansa, British Airways also is like notorious for having bad um, customer service when it comes to like instruments, they have damaged instruments when people have checked them in and it's just it's just a bad experience. You know, I had a colleague who was flying United Airlines and they just completely wrecked the cello. And if you check in your cello, you know, every that's every cellist's nightmare. And lo and behold, she uh, opened up her case and her entire cello was ruined. 
Luckily, she started a GoFundMe campaign. She, you know, raised enough money to buy a new cello. I think the Strad even, the Strad magazine even like picked up that story to see like what is actually happening. But my advice to you, if you're flying with a cello, I would recommend purchasing an extra seat. And it may get very costly, I, I will admit. It will get costly, but if you're flying with a priceless instrument, you, you're gonna wanna protect that investment by spending an extra hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars by having it sit next to you rather than having to check it in. Airlines are now required to let people check in their instrument or also buy a ticket for their cellos. So that way they're sitting right next to them. And I think because of certain safety regulations, the cellos need to be buckled up in a certain way and they need to have a window seat. So that way if there is an emergency, customers and passengers can get off the plane in a, um, in a safe manner. On the topic of flight cases, bases, string bases, uh, string double bass, they have various flight cases as well. And I'm, I'm a little unfamiliar in that realm of, of flight cases, but I know they exist. And I know that you could either rent them or you could purchase one yourself. But also I'm gonna leave a link down below to, to help you. It's actually from the Chamber of Music of America um, organization. They have compiled a list of really, really good bullet points on what to do if you get into like an argument with a flight attendant about your instrument. Um, what to look for in you know planes and airlines and how to file a complaint if something does happen to you. I'm gonna leave that link down in below because I think it's a very good resource for you to go with. I wanna know in the comments section about your flying experience with an instrument. Was it good, was it bad? And if so, can you tell us the story so we can get the conversation going? I would really love that. And I comment to every single comment and I really wanna create a community around here so that way we can um, you know, bounce ideas off each other and, you know, learn from each other. Thanks again for watching to the end. If you liked this video, please hit the like button for the algorithm. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. I do a lot of violin content and also violin tutorials and vlogs of my violin career. Thanks so much and I will see you in the next video.